The KDKA Sports Desk is brought to you by Xfinity. All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh, and we're talking about the Ballon Buccos tonight. Another loss, a 4-3 loss, another one-run loss, and the Pirates' offense couldn't get it together since the first inning. And Starling Marte, a couple batters in, he does this, 3 nothing. Looks like the Buccos are going to put it together, and this offense is going to break out after last night's 10th inning. It's 3 nothing Pirates, but it's what we've come to expect from Chris Archer this season. Although he does go six innings, but also gives up two huge home runs. Paul Goldschmidt does it again into the seats in left field. Game tied, then in the fourth. Jose Martinez, here's the home run you were talking about, Gene. We know he has an arm, but also can do this out in right center. That's Archer's 24th home run this season. The Bucks couldn't find any offense after this. Here. A huge chance, a big missed opportunity. Bases loaded, no outs, and then Josh Bell strikes out, and Colin Moran hits into a double play. And that was in the fifth inning, and that was basically it for the battle in Buccos. They go on to lose this one, four to three tonight. And if the Reds hold on against Milwaukee, they're going to be in last place in the division. And a big news out of Cincinnati, Gene Tyler Boyd. He gets a huge contract. Four for 43. The guy was supposed to make a million dollars this year. Now he's going to make 11 million this year. He's getting 43. Now it's not all guaranteed, but hey, it makes you wonder what Juju is going to get here uh, when his time is up. Because if Tyler Boyd's getting 43 million for four years, I would imagine Juju Smith Schuster. Uh, will be in line to get a lot more than that, Gene, don't you think? Yeah, if he continues to play the way he has, and he looks like a great player, I don't know why he wouldn't uh, cash in to an even greater degree. That's right. Yeah, Boyd was a guy I thought the Steelers might take a chance on. Um, I, I thought that, he, you know, I, I think they talked to him. I don't know how interested they were in him, but obviously he went higher than where the, the Steelers had him at. But um, it was second round, I believe, to the Cincinnati Bengals. So, you know, when you look at Cincinnati's team, I know they're picked to finish, what, last in the north, but this is a team. You, they got A.J. Green and Tyler Boyd. That's their wide receivers. Um, who do you like better, those two or what, Juju Smith-Schuster and Dante Moncrief? When you're putting them on paper, I kind of like what the Bengals have. Yeah, I like their wideouts. Uh, they don't have a lot else. That's a problem, especially on defense now. They, you know. Uh, they've had a lot of injuries and lost a lot of people when they're linebacking and secondary core. I, I think they're they're a solid fourth pick in the division. Yeah, I do too. And the quarterback is the huge issue with them. So Rob Gateway just tweeted us, now would be a great time to point out attendance is up 3% at PNC Park this year. Do you expect attendance to fall f like any more than it did last year? Or do you think it's going to be right around that number? No, I think it'll be less than it was last year. I know it's up 3%, but... Uh, you know, they still have, what, 30 home games to go or something like that. Uh, I think after this homestand, people will uh, realize that, you know, there's, there are other things to do. I mean, you're not looking at a contending team anymore. Yeah, and plus in September, kids are back in school, so you can forget about that. Um, you know, I think... Don't, you know, for, don't forget, I'm sorry, Rich, to interrupt, but don't forget, that it's up 3% from the worst PNC Park attendance ever. Ever, it's yeah. Not a big comp it's not a big accomplishment. No, not at all. And, you know, uh, Dave... Libert, uh, Dave, sorry, I don't, Liberati, uh, he tweeted us, time for the Pirates to sell. I don't think there's, I, there's no way, we've talked about this all the time, there's no way that they're going to sell. I, I, I don't even know what attendance would have to be for Bob Nutting to say, hey, I'm done. Yeah, it's no, not I, think, work I, out I here. think he means sell players at the deadline. I don't no. Know, so. Well, I'm thinking about selling a team. That's where my yeah, mind that's is. That's not right going to happen. Yeah. All right, let's go out to, um, we're going to go out to Paul on the north side. What's up, Paul? Hi, Rich and Jane. How are you tonight? Hey, Good. How Thanks for you? calling. Okay. Uh, is Chris, Chris Archer's got a two- or three-year deal with the Pirates, so they can't get rid of him. Well, is he under really? contract, or can they trade him? Oh, they could trade him. You could trade anyone with a contract. The problem yeah. is who would want him they and what would they get for him. They won't and, do that because what they gave away. Well, I mean, here's the other thing, Paul. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, they're getting him at a bargain basement deal for a starting pitcher. And they thought he was going to be their ace. And that's one of the reasons they traded for him, because he was such a good deal. But now it looks like, wow. you know, now it looks like it, it obviously is not a great deal, even for the money that he's making. No, not, not when he's going to pitch like this. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, go ahead. you yeah. know, as far as uh, just not with Archer, like you said, the hitters, nobody's hitting in the clutch now. You know, Marte had a three-run homer. 
Yeah, like you know, Matt yesterday's Wood. another example. Uh, they can't get any runs in in the bottom of the ninth. They had opportunities. Uh, it, you know, in the tenth inning, we could debate on if they should have. They should have never even been in that situation. You know, Gene, if you want to go back to that that game last night, we left this show and it looked like that they right. were they were going to get killed. The mm -hmm. grand slam is when the show was over. Yeah. Uh, I had no hope of them coming back. Then in the tenth inning, they they rally and they 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 try to get back into it. I'm I'm not going to hey. blame Joey Cora for sending Kevin Newman home. I'm going to blame. Clint Hurdle for not going to Felipe Vasquez and giving him a day off in the ninth inning or in the tenth inning. Um, Clay Holmes shouldn't even be on this roster right now. I thought Vasquez pitched the ninth, didn't he? Well, we still have nine games left. Was not available yesterday. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, yeah. he was not available. I'm saying yesterday's game. Right, right. So, um, Paul, I don't need – sorry to go off on a tangent there, but, you know, I, I hate – I don't know how you feel about this, Gene, but I hate – that you're, you're resting guys like this they are only pitching an inning. I understand he's throwing 100 miles an hour, but, I mean, can he pitch five out of six days or something? Yeah, I know he's pitched three or, or four days in a row before. You know, uh, those are games, obviously, that are in a position to win. Uh, I was a little surprised by that, too. In fact, I thought the broadcast team speculated that he was available, so I, I, I got that wrong. All right, Pete and Squirrel Hill, what's up, Pete? Pete. 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 Oh, we'll get, to you, we'll get to you in a second, Pete. We got Brian in Portview first. What's up, Brian? Oh, hi, Rich and Gene. How are you doing tonight? Hi, Good. Thanks for calling. Good. I'd like to preface my call by saying that, you know, for much of his tenure here, I've been a Neil Huntington supporter, but I hated the Chris Archer trade um, the night they made it or the day they made it, and I hate it to this day. They had a team a few years ago that won 98 games with a playoff do a damn thing at the trade deadline to help that team, and then they give up three of their best prospects for this guy, and he was an average pitcher in Tampa. He had, he had a good year or two occasionally, but he, for the most part he was an average pitcher in Tampa, and to give up Meadows uh, and Shane Boz and um, Tyler Glass now, that trade is a disgrace. Well, at the time, I really liked it, Gene. I'm not going to lie. I mean, we, I, I, I was excited about the trade. And, and, and the reason I was excited about it was you, you were getting a, a bona fide starting pitcher, what we thought was, and you were, you were basically trading Austin Meadows, in my mind, Austin Meadows straight up for Chris Archer because Tyler Glass now, I, I know people are looking at what he's doing in Tampa and what he did in Tampa. He wasn't going to do He was ruined here in Pittsburgh. I mean, I talked to him in spring training. I talked to him a few times uh, last year before he was dealt. His mind was not even focused on baseball. I think they completely screwed him up, and I, I don't know. I think he needed a change of scenery. Yeah, I, th I agree with that, and I, but I also agree with the caller to this extent. Uh, the Pirates, you know, have you know demonstrated that they they don't want to add to the uh, to teams necessarily. Uh, so when they did it last year, uh, people were very pleased with it. Uh, and maybe not looking as closely at the deal as the caller did. But I was with you, Richie. I thought it was, I was uh, you know, happy that they made it, and I thought it would work out well for them. And the word that I got when the Pirates were in spring training was they didn't do it so much for last year competing for a postseason mm -hmm. berth. They did it for this year. Mm -hmm. um, that, that trade was made for this year, and that's why they didn't go and spend any money. You know, that was yeah. their excuse for not spending any and money. And you can make the case, too, that, you know, that, you know, if you want to blame somebody for this trade, how about blaming Chris Archer? He has not performed. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's go out to Pete and Squirrel Hill. What's up, Pete? Gentlemen, how are you tonight? Good. Okay. Rich, I love the look, my man. You look like you just come from a GQ shoot. Hey, thanks a lot. I just got my hair cut. All right, my man. You look yeah. quick. Lauren yeah, from Ozazu did a good job. I've got a personal question for you, which I've been thinking about asking you for quite some time. And you're going to give you a chance to reminisce. I know you worked in Philadelphia for a while and you covered the Phillies. If you could tell me what your personal experience was working from time to time with the great Harry Callis, who, when I was a child, I hunted the dial, Donnie, AM dial, to listen to yeah. him do Phillies games. He was so tremendous. And I don't know if you're aware of this. There are three play-by-play -play guys to this day in Major League Baseball. The Mets, the Giants, and the Angels, when one of their guys hit the ball out of the park, they use his signature call, and that ball is out of here. Uh, Harry's call, to yeah. him. 
can you tell about him? Thank you. Well, sure. Just briefly, I mean, Harry Callis was, uh, you know, not only a great broadcaster, but a, a great guy to be around. And he loved baseball, and he really taught me a lot about baseball, especially about uh, pitching to different situations and that kind of that kind of thing. He was a guy who could r really watch the game very studiously, and you know, really helped me when I was a young writer in Philadelphia, understanding different game situations, who was responsible for what, uh, and helped me look at the game in a different way. So I'll always be grateful to Harry Callis. I miss him all the time. I mean, there's only a, a handful of guys that are as legendary as Harry Callis. Right. All right, we're going to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls, maybe some of your tweets coming up next day right there.